Hello and thank you for joining us again. I have another lovely guest to bring to you today with lots of fabulous information that's really going to be able to help you right now in your business and moving forward into your future with your business, both professionally with your business, obviously, but also personally and help you in your personal life and how to work the two together with what Trudy can bring to the table. So Trudy Pavlovsky, welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me to be a part of this. I'm so excited to be here. Oh, lovely. I'm so excited to bring you to all of our listeners and some of our viewers here on the both the podcast as well as with our YouTube channel. So let me tell you a little bit about Trudy, people. She is Australia's happiness technician. So she's a technician with happiness. Fabulous. So she helps you with big picture goals and bringing them into a reality uh, and bust mindset barriers, rewrite old stories, and pave a glittering path towards happiness and success. Sounds fabulous. She, so she's into sparkles and glitter to help you with your business and your personal life and to bring it all together so that there's a lot more positivity and happiness there, obviously. And I'm going to let Trudy talk to you a little bit about her, her background, but she has certainly overcome quite a lot of things from those old stories that we were talking about from being very young through into young adulthood and now to where she is. So Trudy, take it away. Oh, golly. Open floor. This could be <laughs> Open dangerous. <floor>. <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you so much for having me here. Look, um, my story is, similar to a lot of people, some challenging times growing up, um, decisions and choices that needed to be made to um, transform and change. And uh, the, the biggest thing I've found in creating success, both personally and professionally, is really working on that, that inner voice, the inner dialogue, um, giving yourself permission to speak what it is that you desire in your life and rewriting the meaning of the old stories in your life and especially stuff that happens in childhood you move it and look at it and go hang on I'm an adult now so yeah that's that's me really. <laughs> you want to be want to be humble and modest but tell everyone how awesome you are as well <laughs> yeah it's always a bit of a tricky thing <laughs> So, you know, your old stories that you've overcome bullying uh, when you were young, which then led you into uh, a bit of a, um, a pathway of self-sabotage, mm -hmm. mentally, physically and emotionally. And Very then, destructive in my 20s in particular. Yeah, and then into that whole pa uh, partying scene. And we do tend to see a lot of people go through that. Mm. Um, there was It was an interesting story I heard of recently and I personally have had a, a, a breakthrough session uh, that uh, a TV personality helped me with to, to that that's something that she is really great with with uh, breakthroughs and then how to present yourself and your stories and your messages and it was interesting to hear a story that uh, is actually really quite common for people as they get much older and I am certainly older than you Trudy um, <laughs> so when we get into our older in our life that uh, some of those old stories come back to us we might have brushed them off when we were younger uh, but then as we get older and things happen um, they come back to haunt us again and I, even I you know I felt that I had worked on that quite a lot and then it was still presenting itself when I was trying to pitch my message and how to communicate and help others because yeah. that's what I'm all about and I still had to do another breakthrough session and work on some very, very old stories. So how do you go about, I mean, what's your one, we'll talk about the how to in a moment, but what's your whole um, opinions around those old stories and how they actually do affect people in business? Oh, okay. That's a, that's a big big topic I try to ask um, hard questions <laughs> I I and for somebody who's studied human potential since oh, I think I was about 26 when I first picked up my first personal development book um, oh, where do you start with these stories 
it's like you don't even realize half the time how these stories are impacting you mm. and when i i stopped and i because i've been in business for 10 years now and i feel like i've done a full a full circle of like starting business going out and being a good client and doing what i what i thought i should be doing for business um hating it and then coming back to where i am now underlying all of that in these stories that i was carrying around about myself was self-worth mm. and if you don't get your self-worth and your worthiness happening you can still be successful but it's a heck of a lot harder and i really think everyone should go back and be looking at those stories and going where have i set myself up for failure in this this moment where have i set myself up for success moving forward um because if things are getting stuck and you're stalling chances are it's the old stories but you go back and rewrite those stories and i've rewritten some big stories and shifted the meaning and done a few other things as well to really lock it in you can change change your life transform everything i hope that answered the question <laughs> yeah no definitely yes definitely and the whole rewriting is for some people they might be thinking well, how can I rewrite it? That that is what happened. That is the fact. That's the reality. But the meaning. Another, sorry, I probably should have explained that. The meaning yeah. that you've put on to a story. So you know, you've probably heard, and I'm sure the listeners have heard that three people can see the same car crash and tell a different version of it. Right. Yeah. So when you're thinking of a particular event, if there's lots of emotional charge around it, and you go back and you think, what decision did I make in that moment? did it work for me is it working for me now is it realistic that's when you can go okay i want to change the meaning that i've put on it mm. and once you shift the meaning the energy or the belief or whatever it is around that story changes mm. Mm. beautiful like it sounds it sounds really simple and it actually is <laughs> like humans like to make things complicated but mm. go back and look and go all right when this happened to me what was I thinking about myself at the time? Do I still think that? Is that still right? Mm. And 99% of the time, it's so not right anymore. Mm. So yeah, changing stories has been a huge, huge thing for me. And it's stuff that we, we always work on with clients as well. Mm. Sorry, there's a bit of fluff flying yeah. around my office. <laughs> It's, a bit, it's attracting to you. <laughs> I usually get that with fluff and also moths. I don't know what that, well, actually I did Google that recently. But yeah, that's like, oh, okay, that's a bit spooky. <laughs> I have two cats as well. So they oh, tend okay. to, there's fur everywhere. Uh, so how would someone go about, you know, changing that, meeting, that meaning for the, their stories? Okay. Well, look, I mean, there's no one right way to do any of this stuff. So I would suggest um, looking at what's not working, go, what do I make? Look for meaning, right? Look for anywhere where there's meaning. Um, you can journal on it. You can um, re actually physically rewrite the story with a new meaning or a different ending. Um, a lot of people recommend, um, and I do this, I go back and reparent, especially for stuff from childhood. I'll reparent my inner child and go, okay, little Trudy, how are you feeling around that? What, what does that mean for you? Let me reassure you now as an adult, we've got it covered. Um, there's hypnotherapy, like there's so many things. And look, to be honest, I've done them all. For, for me, it really is now when you're rewriting the story and looking at the meaning, is looking for those things to, to lock it in. So whether that's, um, for the listeners, we were saying off the call before we started um, how much we love post-it notes. I have a post-it note that tells me I'm allowed. So mm. with whatever I want to do, where I'm going, I'm constantly reminded and reprogramming that, that neural pathway. I'm allowed. I'm allowed. I can have. I can. This is what I desire. This, this will make, make better things happen for my life and giving myself permission. Um, there's so many different ways that you can, can rewrite the story and rewrite the meaning. Mm. So Beautiful. that's probably just opened up <clears throat> a can of worms for everyone. Yeah. Well, I was actually just thinking too, <laughs> some people would actually be fearful and thinking either fearful to open up a can of worms for themselves because they to, to, to look back and look at these things and be thinking it is a can of worms 
or others be going, oh my gosh, it's a can of worms. I don't want to open that up. I just makes me angry. Uh, Is it really worth it at the end of the time, at the end of the day, because I'll just get emotional and upset. What would be your take on do, should people open up those cans of worms um, and Look, my my philosophy on those worm cans is if it's not impacting your life now moving forward let it go I'm as a coach um, or a technician as I call myself now I'm I'm not for going back and looking for things that aren't causing a problem in your present why would you like if yeah. it's done if the if you've got to dig for it you don't necessarily need to do anything with it um, if you're worried about opening worm cans on your own, get somebody to help you. Yeah. Like you don't have to do everything on your own. Like we were talking about this before the call, like it's quite Aussie to yes. feel you have to be strong and you can't shine too much and you've got to be stoic and you should be able to figure it out yourself, but get help. Like the best thing I ever did for personal and professional transformation was to get somebody to support me. Yeah, because absolutely. That, you reach out, you put your hand up, there is always somebody there mm, that can help you with that. Even if you are a ho- helper, it's still okay to still go and get help. I mean, every coach has a coach. Yeah, I'm always concerned that if there's like a, a coach or somebody who's like, oh, I don't need a coach, I don't have a coach. And it's like, well, how are you getting better? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I'll never not have, have some sort of support in my life. And I'm the happiest I've ever been like but why would I not have somebody there to help me be happier yeah beautiful but yeah um I think we're we're taught that we have to sit down shut up not complain but you know what if it's not working for you open a can of worms yeah and look it might not, might not even mean you need to open a can of worms to transform your life like there's some foundational tools that you can just go out and learn like metaphysics totally transform my life understanding metaphysics and implementing it so it doesn't have to be hard work about going backwards all the time you can just decide as well all right well whatever happens happened what do I do now in this moment which is where I prefer to come from anyways as a technician it's like let's rebuild new neural pathways for you to get what you want and reset your cellular set point to move forward. Like all of those, mm. those things, mm. um, I think going back too much can also be detrimental as well. Yeah, true. And then with this whole setting the, the, the new set point, uh, the, the new benchmark and the way that you perceive things helps you then with uh, decision-making and decision-making mm. also for your business as well as in your personal life to be able to achieve those goals, you know, those major objectives and one of them being happiness, um, how would you define happiness? Oh, happiness happens in the moment. It's, it's that feeling you get, like, for me, happiness makes me smile. I just feel good. I'm not worried about what's coming up, not anxious about what's happened, or I'm, I'm in the moment and I'm... I can't wipe the smile off my face. Like to me, to me, that's happiness. It's very, very personal. I'm sure there's a technical dictionary definition of it out there that would sum it up much more succinctly. But I think it's, it's such a personal thing, but I think happiness is experienced in the moment. Yeah. And what do you think, what's your opinion about people who are in business and with a whole lot of the, the stresses that are going on and happiness? I've known people that have looked at it and have said, well, hold on, it's a dog eat dog world. So I need to be firm. I need to be out there, you know, setting my worth and protecting myself and doing other people over and, you know, having to, to tread on others. And that's what business is about. Yeah. You know, that the happiness is, doesn't come into even the thoughts for a lot of these people, happiness and business. I mean, what about your opinions on that? I, I'm very opinionated on this topic. <laughs> um, <laughs> look, cause I used to operate in, when I first got into business and even in my retail career before that, it was, you were taught to be ruthless. That's just how it was. Um, and it is a very Aussie thing as well. But who, who decided that? Mm. Who decided that you couldn't 
be happy in the moment of doing business, that you had to be cutthroat. Like who made that decision? Who told you that? Because I attempted to operate like that for five years. My first business never went anywhere because it was competitive, it was fighting, there was aggression, it didn't feel good. And when you, whatever feeling you have and you amplify that and you send that out to the world, that's what you get back. And I know for me personally, especially the last 18 months have been hugely transformational because I walked out of places that weren't authentic, um, where I was online spaces and I walked away and I'm like, what do I want? How do I want to feel in business? What content do I want to be presenting? And I'm like, I'm tired of it being hard. I've pushed for, and I'm sure there'll be people listening who'll be nodding their heads, pushed really hard for nearly a decade. And it got me nowhere. Now that I've gone, I want to be happy. I want to enjoy what I do. I'm just going to live in these moments. And I'm going to amplify these beautiful feelings of joy and appreciation especially in the last six months, which everyone is saying, well, not everyone, but so many people are having challenges in business. Mm. I'm taking off right? yeah. because I've made the decision. It gets to be easy. It gets to be fun. I get to enjoy it. I get to do what I love and the technical stuff I can, you know, the website stuff and all that. I outsource that. If it doesn't bring me joy, I let it go. It's very Marie Kondo, isn't it? <laughs> but, you know, it's, it doesn't have to be that way. And this is a story that there's going to be people out there who will be wanting to rewrite that. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Chances are we've grown up watching our parents work super hard to bring in money. So we're like, we have to be hard or somebody said something and we've adopted that. But if you've adopted that belief, adopt a new one. Mm. And I, I look, and it, I don't want to sound trite to people listening. I have huge businesses and a lot of responsibility or anything like that. But I just, I kind of want to challenge you a little bit as well mm. <laughs> to mm. start focusing on asking questions like, how can this be easy today? Mm. How can I love this today? How mm. can I, how can I do something nice for myself today to bring me joy? Yeah. You know, it's, I just see a lot of people out there who are pushing and grinding and it's so hard and they're so stressed and so unhappy. And it's like, it doesn't why? actually have to be. Yeah. It doesn't have to be. And why? And it's so true. I often say exactly what you said, you know, who says so, you know, there, there's been comments that we've had in the past to other business owners um, to my husband and I that have said, you know, you're not greedy enough, so you'll never be that successful. Well, who says that you have to be greedy? Yeah. Um, actually, I know some beautiful really people who are super successful in business. They enjoy making money, but they're not greedy about it because they tied back 10 to 20% of what they, they earn back into charities that they care about. That's so right. it's not greedy to make money because here's another story that people can rewrite, right? It's not greedy to make money. I grew up hearing that. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, rich people suck basically is what, yep. what yep. I grew up with. And I didn't want to be a rich person who was mean to people. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, you know, and there's like going right back to the start. This is the stuff you want to be looking for. Success leaves clues. Lack of success leaves clues. So yeah, if you're not sure if you need a story to rewrite, here's another, another story that you can consider. Mm. And also, so yeah, a lot of people are not quite fully aware, let alone how, and some people, a lot of people are, that, that so this is about the empowerment that you can design your life and you can mm -hmm. design your future story and your current story. And, but then some people then want to take on other people's stories, which aren't really their story, which we've seen yeah. a little bit of about recently in the media, um, which is really sad because that's still living in past stories. It's not living in a new future, better yeah. story. You know, I've, we've seen a, we've seen the trend of where people are wanting to achieve better and bringing up their consciousness and bringing yeah. up their positivity. And unfortunately, there's been a lot of pushback, uh, even for things out of our control as far as the the the, the virus. We, therefore, we need to have lots of strong leaders to help show the way yeah. to a lot of people how to be resilient and still move forward and yeah. live by design and therefore 
bring happiness as a part of it. I often say to people, you know, we've got two choices. We live or we die. So if we're going to be alive, you know, we'll let live. do something with it. Yeah, otherwise mm. we're not really living it, are we? Yeah. We need to have the happiness there. Yeah. Um, and I think some people stumble, well, I know a lot of people do stumble over the whole happiness and then what is happiness and what makes them happy. And hearing your explanation of it sounds so lovely, but if they were to come away from this podcast and they'd be thinking, but still, how do I really make that first few steps? Yeah. So what do you think would be a first few steps for a couple of people? Okay. I think the first thing I like to go large is like, what's your identity? Who are you identifying as? I'm a hardworking business owner or I'm somebody who's creating a life I love. Mm. You can even hear in the inflection in my voice, like the tonality change. And for those um, that are um, listening to the podcast, it's like, even when I was speaking those words, I felt myself like, working really hard, like even my whole body hunched down, yeah. right? It's like creating a life I love, my whole body opened up. Like it starts with you and, and, and I have a, the whole I'm allowed thing. It's giving yourself permission to say, well, what do you actually want? How do you want to feel? Because when you get into that feeling framework and you're honest with yourself, that's the next part of transformation is being honest with yourself and going, hey, you know what? Uh, I, I, I don't want to be a, a, a slave to my business anymore because that was me two years ago. I was working 12, 14 hours a day, not getting results, push, push, push. And I was just like, I was ready to quit. I was exhausted. I was just running around in circles, chasing my tail. So when you turn around and you look at who am I, how do I identify? How do I want to feel? How can I, how can I create that? What do I need to see around me to feel that? And that starts giving you some action steps in there. So if we've got time, I'd like to, to share a little story if that's, that's Sure, right. absolutely. Go for it. So um, last year I decided, gave myself permission that I wanted to be um, more visible and I wanted to be on television and I really wanted to be seen more to share my message um, and started really feeling that. And from where I was at two years ago, it's like, who are you to be on national TV? Who are you to be hosting live events with 500 people in a room? Like, well, who am I not? But I decided in, in that, it's like, this is what I want. Now, opportunities started showing up and showing up. And some of those opportunities I couldn't take. But today, before our, um, our connection, I got filmed for national TV. Like, so you get to decide and curate how you want your life to look. But you need to make the decision. And change your identity if that's what you need to do journal every day around this is how I want to feel and most people will see a vision because you know huge population is visual but you've got to step into the feeling as well how good will it feel mm. so in the last year I've um, felt my way into the most perfect perfect relationship I've ever had in my life I'm now um, going to be on national tv um, and all these opportunities are coming because I shifted my identity and tapped into the feelings and gave myself permission. I'm allowed to be famous. I'm allowed to do these things. I'm allowed to have a life that's easy and fun. I'm allowed to have money come to me in fun and easy, expected and unexpected ways. It's, you get to choose. And the older we get, the more we contract because we develop a consequence bias. But now, because I'm actually 46, so now's the time to, to start taking those changes. Don't, don't wait. Don't mark yourself and feel it's like, well, I've always done this and I have to do it this way. It's like, give yourself permission. Mm. It's really only been the last couple of years that I myself have given myself permission. Mm. It's beautiful, beautiful. I get a bit excited and a bit <laughs> about this. Sorry, everybody. I'm excited. I'm overwhelmed by my energy. <laughs> I love it. I love it. It's, it's good to be excited and it's, it's good that the passion is there because, well, it, and I, it's definitely there because you're owning it. You know, I met you, Trudy, approximately three years ago, uh, listeners. I met Trudy then and I think, you know, we were all sort of what we were doing then. We were all on a bit of a self-discovery tour in our life of what are we going to do now for the next part of our life? And I, I do remember that with you that there was that, not only that reservation, but 
there was still, um, and like all of us, you know, as far as nitpicking ourselves and the, the energy there wasn't there. And then meeting up with you again today, gosh, you are owning your message. Yeah. And, you know, prior to having coming on to this interview, when Trudy and I had a chat, you know, I could really see that Trudy had really, truly blossomed yeah. and is really happy and enjoying this and is is worthy of someone really wanting to listen to. And this is what uh, business is, uh, is often about, is that people want to have someone to follow uh, and someone who is a leader. And you really need to be able to show up and be worthy. So it starts with yourself inward to then go outward. Mm -hmm. And um, so I can law of it happen with you. Correspondence as within, so without, as the universe, so the soul. So like whatever's going on inside is just getting reflected back yep. to you in the, in the external world. So yep. why not make it good? <laughs> exactly, exactly. And look, some of us, you know, it takes a while for that to happen or that we go through different stages in our lives. And like, I feel like I'm on my fourth time of living, you know, a different life now in this one life, you know. <clears throat> and that's The evolution. Like, <laughs> oh gosh, I've evolved and evolved oh. and evolved. <laughs> the different animals that I've become. Though. <laughs> but that's okay because that's the exciting part. And I think yeah. that entrepreneurs are typically a little bit more used to that because they're um, used to the, the excitement and the challenge and the change. Small business owners, there's still that little bit of a, a pushback. The, the, the difference between the two is that entrepreneurs, technically, they take a little bit more risk than what uh, the classification yeah. of an entrepreneur compared to small business owner. But yet I often see, and I hear that, and I often say to them, but hold on, but you have taken risk. You're in yeah. business. Starting a business is huge. Yes, <laughs> massively, massively. But I suppose when you're in it and you've been doing it, like you just, you forget because it becomes your new normal. Mm, mm. so and this is with anything that you're doing in life we get i won't tell many years we're complacent but it's kind of like complacent it's in our comfort zone and we're doing our thing yeah 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 treading water i call yeah. it and doing the craft if we're really needing to move forward and to evolve and to to achieve some goals and especially if we've not been happy with how we've been doing business again we need to come back and look at ourselves and our self-worth and there was something else that I wanted to talk and ask you about Trudy around the imposter syndrome mm -hmm. because then people then when they look at their self-worth and those inner voices and those that that um the story again it comes back to well who am I to to say that um if I'm trying to rewrite my my story does that mean then i'm really going to be an imposter so what would you what would be your tips around imposter syndrome cool okay so with imposter syndrome and i think we all have those feelings of where we feel like a fraud and um you know especially if things are happening faster than we expect and good things or bad whatever whatever it is but with the, the, the inner critic, the imposter voice, I think the best thing you can do is learn to love that voice because it's actually your ego mind and it's a part of you. And most of the time it's actually out at, uh, acting misguidedly out of love for wanting to keep you safe. And so when you're going back and rewriting any of those stories, it doesn't mean you're a fraud. It doesn't mean you're a fake. It doesn't mean you failed. It just means you're taking the opportunity. And if this little voice is popping up, I like to um, I like to recognize it and say, okay, are you ego? Are you heart? Are you in a child? Like, where is it coming from? Because um, I sabotaged before I be, became a, a happiness technician. I worked in retail and I completely sabotaged my career because I got the top job, felt like a fraud, didn't know how to manage it and ended up getting paid redundant. So I would go away. <laughs> Um, that's an interesting way of doing it <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, it was an interesting time of my life uh, <laughs> but this this inner critic it's like as soon as you whether it's depression anxiety imposter syndrome whatever as soon as you set yourself up that you've got to fight it 
like, oh, I'm going to fight this imposter voice, kick this to the curb, do this. That's when you're setting yourself up for it to be a harder job than it needs to be. So whether you're rewriting your stories, whether you're feeling like a thought in your head or whatever it is, it's like be loving and kind to yourself because the way that we are uh, created as humans is we are designed to do the best that we can in every moment. So whether you've, you know, and if you've looked after yourself in a way that potentially hasn't worked out the way that you would have liked it to, that's okay. So I don't think, and, and coming to terms with that in my own head and being able to be okay with that and okay with myself and with the past and anything that I was rewriting and, you know, reframing the meaning around events, um, it just made it a heck of a lot easier because in case you haven't figured it out, I like things to be easy. <laughs> so, um, so my, my big tip with there is if you're going in with the mentality of I've got to fight this, I've got, you're fighting yourself. Mm. Fill it with love. Like, you know, I'm not the most, I'm not a hippie spiritual chick. Like I'm very science-based, but love actually changes so many things. And that's why I said at the start, that self-worth part, that's where it all begins. Mm. Yeah. So, and, and awareness is the key. Because if you catch yourself now going, oh, I can't do this. Everyone will think I'm an idiot or blah, blah, blah. Or that's not good enough. Even when somebody's telling you it is, it's like, oh, hang on. Hang on, little inner critic. What's going on? I'm doing really well. And you're scared that if I keep doing really well, things will change. Okay, that's great. Thanks for that. But I'm going to keep doing well. <laughs> Does that make sense? I hope that made sense. Oh, In my head I it did. I think that's so awesome. It definitely made sense. And I'm getting these flashbacks of my things that have happened in the past. <laughs> You're going, yeah. And, and it's so true. It's so true. Yeah. I often say, yeah, when I've had to really deal with a, a lot of people like, and, and conflict management, it's actually to try to be more in control rather than forcing it and, and yeah. the situation being in control. If I've actually brought it out with love and generosity and my intent is there and I bring and I know that it does change the voice and the body language and it brings it down yeah. and mirroring happens and then they calm down and I'm still in control because I'm still can pave a pathway. Therefore, the first one to do that is more Perfect. the leader. And how much that's actually helped me in management roles of sorts um it's like wow and and yes and how that can happen then in some people are not brought up to to love themselves and eventually we can get to there we can we have control now as we we are taught to not love ourselves i was actually talking to the the lady who did my hair and makeup for me today and i was telling her about a documentary I, i stumbled upon on youtube called the century of the self and it talks about how after the wars that governments needed people to buy more stuff and that women were wanting to go out and work now and that big huge shift so they created this whole marketing machine um and and basically turned us against ourselves so we would feed the corporations and buy stuff and when i i learned that like i nice like nice things and nice skincare and good products and stuff for myself I'll always buy them but it allowed me to differentiate from the the marketing reason why I was buying them or why and why I genuinely wanted things and it just really allowed me to see that I've been taught to hate myself Mm. there's Mm. been circumstances in my life as well but that marketing message that's out there especially for women although you know men feel it as well it's you know you got to be this. You've got to have this certain size. You've got to look a certain way. Mm. Right? Yeah, mm. it's fascinating to see how much we've all been programmed. Mm. But like with any programming, you can reprogram. Absolutely. Absolutely. Oh, you're singing from a hymnal. And really when we... <laughs> I like that phrase. <laughs> Watch out, I might bust out a tune. <laughs> <laughs> look out, I might just sing with you. That's the problem. <laughs> Stay tuned to the end. You might get a song. <laughs> Uh-oh. Not promising, though. <laughs> My husband would go, no. <laughs> <laughs> I often break out and song. Um, apparently, my tone isn't great, but uh, <laughs> like yeah, I, I like little random songs, too. <laughs> yeah, I do. Yeah, we're like soul sisters. Oh, yeah, definitely. And today has just been like, oh, uncanny with a lot of the things that we've been, um, you know, discussing. It's like, actually, and with you saying, oh, I was talking about that earlier today. 
um, really quite amazing. But it, when you can really stand back and you can see a lot of this, how we've been programmed over time, mm -hmm. really as humanity has been, like to, to serve to serve, you know, and to, to be control the masses and to control and to be of service to the, the bigger money turnover. This yeah. is the thing though, right now that, and it was forecast at the end of last year that uh, with entrepreneurism, that it's going to be quadrupling in the next three to five years. And the next five to 10 years is going to be massively different, especially with the, those big organizations. Yeah. The thing is that with, COVID, it's been the catalyst to make it happen a whole lot sooner. Oh, it's fast tracked so many so things. much. <laughs> but to be honest, I was actually considering um, at the end of the year, last year, I'm like, do I want to still be in business? I was mm -hmm. actually thinking, nah, don't know. Went out and did some casual promo jobs and stuff. But then when COVID kicked in, all the other work disappeared anyway. So now I'm back. But it was actually a really good break. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, it was fascinating to see people um, sit back and reassess. Yep. And I, I know COVID has not been great in a lot of areas, but I think it's actually been such a blessing. Like it totally reset me. Yeah. And I was yep. cruising along quite nicely, but it really gave me the reset to go, all right, if I'm doing it, this is what I'm doing. Yeah. And it's for everyone. I'm allowed. Remember that. I'm allowed. Rewrite the story. Look at your beliefs. <laughs> Yep. And give yourself permission. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and it's such a beautiful, strong message to take forward because there's going to be so many people now doing more and more, being their own bosses. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that is the, the underpinning for everything, really, yeah. uh, as far as to be able to move forward. So, look, I really thank you for bringing that message to uh, all of the entrepreneurs and small business owners that are, are listening to this because it's going to help them to now how to build it up, especially because yep. of all this COVID, how to, to build up their businesses and their lives and move forward. And remember, and make people, like you don't have to buy into the old beliefs that business has to be hard. I know there's a certain really well-known person out there that talks about all the hustle. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but hustle isn't for everyone. Hustle is for some people. I know some people, they hustle and they love it and they thrive on it. And there's nothing wrong with hustling if that's your thing. But there's a lot of people out there that are burning out from the hustle. Yeah. So I just decided I'm just going to let it be easy and fun. Yeah. And if you go into your business with that energy, and I know we're not talking about vibration and stuff at the moment, but if you go out there with that energy, all you need to remember what I said earlier, as within, so without, as the universe, so the soul, what you put out, what is a reflection going inside, reflects back from the outside. So for anyone who's starting a business or resetting their business, please keep that in mind when you start and think of the energy that you're bringing to it. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So beautiful. important. Yeah. I absolutely. wish somebody had said that to me 10 years ago. Oh, look, I was a stress so bunny when I started my first ago. business. <laughs> I had no idea what I was doing and it was hard and everyone was like, Rah! I was just like, yeah, all right. That should have been a lot more easier and a lot more fun. Yep. I've walked the path, everyone. It's okay. I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from experience. That's what I always say. It's like, don't learn the way I did. <laughs> don't be like me yeah. then. Be like me now. Learn from my lessons, but don't do it. The hard. Some of us, like, you know, I've got two kids that want to do it the hard way and one that will listen. It's like, so some people still need to do it, you know. Some people and need to learn the lesson, and I respect that. Learn it quickly is what I'm yeah. going to say. <laughs> Oh gosh, yes. The night See, we're having night. fun. <laughs> well, exactly. Look for the silver lining. Look for yep. the dream. Absolutely. So tell us, Trudy, you have, well, actually, let's just do a quick question. What's on the horizon for you in 2020? Oh, lots of exciting things. Uh, more TV. I'm writing a book. I'm building an Oracle deck um, about happiness. So it's uh, in the process. Um, and I've recently launched my group coaching slash membership site called Liberate Your Life and uh, still doing one-on-one. -on -one. Um, happy with my man, waiting for a ring. Uh, <laughs> can't say that too loud. And I'll pee around that and make it some really big shiny stuff, you know, put pictures around the place. <laughs> uh, it's, it'll happen, hopefully, you know, hopefully sooner rather than later, but I'm a little bit impatient sometimes. Um, but yeah, look, my, my goal is just to really keep staying in, 
staying happy and doing what I love and Good. just giving myself permission every day to stretch and expand and push myself a little bit further and yeah beautiful lovely and I know you have an offer for the listeners and viewers so what is your offer um oh I just mentioned it then actually liberate your life um it is a membership site that I run I do a weekly live in there a monthly group coaching call um it's it's a really really safe container I get I get told this a lot that my spaces online are really nurturing and people can come in and feel safe to talk about whatever it is that they need, whether it's business support or personal support. Um, that's my new baby that I've, um, at the time of this call, just launched. Um, so if you listen to this podcast and you want to know more, um, just message me and say, I heard you on, on the podcast. What's the special prize? Uh -huh. <laughs> so podcast listeners can have the special prize. Mm, lovely, lovely. Well, I've got the URL on this uh, web page uh, mm -hmm. further down, and so then they can message you. So if they go through to the URL, uh, mm -hmm. uh, can they message you that way? Otherwise, I'll grab a, a, another way how to to, to contact you. Um, if they have a look at the web the the website and the Liberate Your Life page, and it sounds good, or they've got questions um, and they want the special prize, uh -huh. Uh -huh. email me and yeah. say, "Hey, I've got questions, or what's the price, or will this." you know, will this be what I need? Um, and we'll go from there. So it's, okay. it's, it's really easy. It's Trudy at TrudyPavlovsky.com. <laughs> <laughs> lovely. Easiest lovely. email ever. <laughs> <laughs> lovely, lovely. Love it. Okay. So that's really awesome uh, listeners that um, to make sure that you reach out to Trudy and to ask her what's her special price. Yes. So again, I thank you very much for bringing so much to the table today. Those stories, the insights, the the some strategies and the tips around that seriously awesome is there any last minute thing i know we've talked quite a lot and you have oh look i could talk to you for hours <laughs> um look for me i'm, I'm a time-based person time is a really big thing that weighs used to weigh quite heavy on me but not so much now but i'm very aware of it and oh, don't wait don't wait just go for it now. I don't care if you're 20, if you're 50, if you're 80 or any, anywhere in between, like just life's short. Just mm -hmm. give yourself permission to enjoy it. Yep. Beautiful. You're, you're allowed. You're allowed. Okay. Work on that. I, I am statement. I, am, like I think, yeah, yeah, a lot of people are going to write that and put it up on their wall. <laughs> oh, look, I have post-it notes on the door before I leave. It says I'm allowed. So every time I leave the house, I see that post-it note at the door. Nice. That's a good one. Yeah. I'm going to do that too. <laughs> well, as kids, we're, we're taught we don't have autonomy of ourselves. We always have to ask someone and in school and in high school and yeah. in work. And I was like, no, ask yourself. Give yourself permission. Yeah. So much more fun. Love it, love it, love it. Look, thank you so much for today. Absolute pleasure. I had so much fun. I, like I said, I could talk for hours. But I really hope that the listeners got, got some good value. Oh, definitely, definitely. So we'll say see you later. Bye for now. Bye, everyone. <laughs>